Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we are going to be configuring static routing as part of practice exercise. So far, I've connected the two routers together using fast Ethernet 1 ports. I've connected the 2960 switch to router 1. I've connected the 3750 switch to router 2. You can use any ports on the switches that you like for that. I've also connected VM1 from the kit into the 2960 switch and VM2 for the kit into the 3750 switch. Again, to connect the VMs, you can use any port on the switch that you would like. Next step, we are going to connect into the VMs and configure IP. Okay, I've logged into VM1. Just going to change the IP address to the one that matches the schematic. That's all I have to do for that. Going to log into VM2 and do the same thing. And that's all we need to do for that. If you were doing this from Windows, you're going to be using PuTTY for that configuration. Now that our client workstations are set up, we need to configure routing. Going to connect into the access server for my kit. We'll configure router R1 first. Change to privilege mode. Change to global config. And we'll apply the host name just to make it a bit easier to keep track. All right, we'll configure IP on the interface going to the switch first. And we will enable the interface. And then we will configure IP on the interface between the routers. And we will enable the interface. And that is all we need to configure in order to get the router itself working. Now, one of the things we can do is a quick check and we'll make sure that we can ping our VM. And that works perfectly. Now at this point in time, of course, we cannot ping anything else from the router because we don't have router 2 configured yet. So let's go over and do that. Switch to enable mode. Switch to global config. Again, we'll apply the host name. And we'll first configure the interface connected to the switch. And 
and enable the interface. And then we will configure the interface connecting the two routers together. And enable the interface. Now at this point, let's again test and make sure we can ping the VM that is on the interface connected to the switch. And that works perfectly. Let's also see if we can ping between the routers. That should work too. Actually, that would work perfectly well if I didn't typo the IP address. Excellent. Now from router two, we should not be able to ping the VM connected to the switch on router one. So let's try that out and make sure that doesn't work. And indeed it doesn't, so why not? Let's take a look at our routing table at this point in time. We can see right now that there are only two routes that the router knows about. Those are the networks that are directly connected, 172.16.2.0 and 172.16.255.0. It does not know about 172.16.1.0, which is where that other VM lives. If we switch over to router one, we're going to see something pretty similar. Again, we can see two routes in the routing table. Each one of those is for the network that is directly connected to the router. So we can see 172.16.1.0, which is on the interface connected to the switch, and then 172.16.255.0, which is connected to the other router. We cannot see 172.16.2.0, which is the switch on the other side of router two. What we need to do is find a way to get some routes in the routing table so that this router knows how to forward traffic to 172.16.2.0 and then also that, so that router 2 knows how to forward traffic to 172.16.1.0. And we're going to do that with static routes. Going to back out to global config mode. And the way that we do this is specify IP route, that is the command that we can use to create a static route. We specify the target network that we want to go to, 172.16.2.0, along with the net mask that we use to get to that other network. We know that's slash 24, so we use 222.55.0 for the network mask. And then the next thing we specify is one of the options to get to the other network. What we're going to do is specify the first option, which is the forwarding router's address. That means we're going to specify the IP address of a router that is connected to this router and knows how to get to the target network. In this case, that will be the IP address on the 172.16.255 network, which is the one that joins those two routers together. Once we've done that, let's take a look at our routing table again. And now we see that we have a static route that has been added in to our routing table. This, the S indicates static, the 172.16.2.0 slash 24 indicates the target network. How are we going to get there? We're going to send the traffic to 
Let's go over to router two and create a route coming back the other way. Now we're going to do something a little bit different here. Instead of creating a static route for a specific network, we're going to create a route of last resort or very often called the default gateway. This is something that's quite common if you have something like a branch office as an example where the only thing you have to wor worry about is routing everything back through one interface to one IP address on some other router. There are no other options with respect to paths that the traffic can take. Going next back to global config again. And we do the same thing as we did before on router one and say IP route, that's going to create our static route. But in this case, the target network is going to be all zeros. And the associated subnet mask is going to be all zeros. In other words, the zero slash zero network is, is how the router knows that we're looking at the route of last resort or the default route. And then I'm going to specify the router that we're going to send the traffic to is the IP address on the router connected to router two. Now we'll take a look at the routing table. And we see something similar, but at the same time a wee bit different than what we saw in router one. Again, we have a static route. Here it is. We see that the target network is all zeros slash zero, and we're sending that traffic via 172.16.255.1. In other words, the IP address connected to that router. Now notice something else though that shows up here, and that is the gateway of last resort is also configured. And essentially, again, that just means that we're setting up a default gateway. Now at this point in time, we should be able to ping everything from router two. Let's go back and make sure we can still ping the workstation that is connected to it through the switch. And that still works. Now we should be able to ping through to the 172.16.1 network as well. So we can ping the router, and let's try pinging also the host. And that works perfectly. The last thing we'll do is we'll check that the hosts can ping each other. If I go over here to VM1, I can say I want to ping. I'll do three of them. And we'll make sure we can make it all the way through to the host on the 172.16.2 network, in other words, VM2. And if I type that correctly, that would be even better. And we can see that our three pings make it absolutely no problem. Obviously, this should work from the other way around. Let me pop over onto VM2. And we'll make sure that we can ping back to VM1, and of course that works perfectly. That's basically a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.